Hello everyone, I'm Richard. So, regular Digital Foundry viewers will know that we've already dissected the specifications of the upcoming PlayStation Neo console. And today, we're going to be taking a closer look at the characteristics of its GPU. Now, good question. How are we able to do this months away from launch? Well, it's simple. The Neo is based on the Polaris 10 graphics core from AMD with 36 compute units. And what do you know? That is identical to the brand new RX 480. The only difference is in the clock speed. The Radeon PC part boosts up to 1266 MHz, while the GPU core in Neo is locked to 911. And funnily enough, if you look at AMD's Wattman application on the PC here, well, check out Power State 2 there, 910 megahertz. Lock our RX 480 to that, and we are essentially matching Neo's 4.2 teraflops. Sony will be taking Polaris 10 and integrating it into a new APU with upgraded Jaguar CPU cores. And the same thing happened with the original PS4. So this is the Radeon R7265. Enable a couple of compute units, cut the clocks, and we have a virtual match. And that made me wonder, the R7265 at 900 megahertz offers the same 1.84 teraflops as the PS4. So what happens if we compare them? In theory, we should see a number of things, but principally, if we compare identical gaming workloads, we should get some measure of scalability between the old architecture and the new. So let's begin by taking a look at Star Wars Battlefront. Now we put a fair amount of time into analyzing the PS4 version and setting up equivalent console settings on PC. And here it is running on our PS4 target system using the R7265 at 900p, same as PS4. So yeah, we're hovering around 60 FPS here, just like the actual PS4 console game. So now let's retain those exact settings and drop our target Neo system into the deep end with 4K resolution. That's a straight up 5.8x boost to pixel count and yet yeah, the results well, they're not so great. Often we dip below 30 FPS and the average across this clip is 29.6 FPS versus 64.2 on our surrogate PS4. Now that's 117% faster. I'll be honest though, in a way I was impressed that's almost six times the pixel count with half the frame rate. Okay, so Sony really wants developers to offer 4K gaming with a saw. It will settle for lower resolutions and it's particularly happy with 3200 by 1800, 1800p if you like, as a compromise. So we tested that next. That's a straight 4x boost to PS4's 900p and clearly frame rate still isn't good enough. 39.1 FPS. At 900p, the old GPU is 65% faster. But here's the thing, the Neo GPU really finds its feet at 1440p. Frame rate averages at 57.8 FPS here. Now we're lagging behind the original game by just 13.8%. Now that's not bad, but here's the thing. Sony's advice for developers isn't to use 1440p resolution for PS Neo gaming, because according to them, it doesn't scale so well on a 4K display display and that's actually a bit of a shame because in our tests 1440p really is the best fit in terms of scalability when comparing one Radeon generation to the next and you can see it here in our next test where I went for a pure 1080p game this time one that I thought would be a little easier to run at a higher resolution. So yeah, Street Fighter V, medium settings on PC. This is a complete match visually for the PS4 version. And lo and behold, our target PS4 hardware with the R7265 pretty much gives us a locked 60 FPS. Now Street Fighter V is an interesting game because its replays, which we're using here to provide a synchronized performance test, well, they don't drop frames like a typical video game. Instead, the game slows down. Now you can see here that the target Neo hardware at 1440p actually completes the replay very slightly ahead of the target PS4. So there's slightly less slowdown. But well, at 1800p and 2160p, that's 4K, well, the picture isn't so pretty there. The former completes 12 seconds behind schedule, while the latter lags by a whopping great 54 seconds. That's a hell of a lot of slowdown. Once again, it does seem to suggest that PlayStation Neo's graphics hardware is best suited to 1440p gaming. Now elsewhere on the channel, you'll see benchmarks of our target systems here and actually there are some interesting results, like this one. 
I reran our Witcher 3 test sequence at console equivalent settings. 1440p is actually a hell of a lot faster than our PS4 equivalent system. And in actual fact, 1800p, which scales up beautifully to 4K by the way, is almost as fast. We lose about 5% of frame rate for a 2.7x increase to pixel count. And that's pretty amazing. And I was also fairly impressed by the results I saw with Rise of the Tomb Raider. Again, there's the same differential in pixel count and we're seeing a 15% performance drop. I mean, that's not bad for 2.7 times the amount of pixel throughput. But the bottom line is that you can't argue with the hard limits of pixel fill rate from the GPU and this is one factor that stops the Neo from being a true 4K console. Sony knows this too, which is why it's advocating upscaling strategies to developers. Now, one of the more interesting ones, which is news to me, is what it calls the 2x2 checkerboard. We had to dig deep to find out what this actually was, but I think we found a match here in this GDC Valve VR talk. Okay then, so for every 4x4 pixel structure, you natively render a 2x2 block, which is then put through a post-processing filter to fill in the gaps. Think of it as next-gen upscaling, if you like. What this means is that instead of rendering four times the pixel count for 4K, now we just have to double it. I really want to see how good this looks, and I think the success of it will all depend on the quality of the reconstruction algorithm. We've not seen it deployed in games yet, but we have already seen another interesting upscaling algorithm in Ubisoft's Rainbow Six Siege. Essentially, this technique sees the game render with half the number of pixels on each axis with an ordered grid MSAA pattern before reconstructing the image to match the final output. This is then coupled with a post-process temporal anti-aliasing solution to minimize artifacts in motion. So at 1080p, we're technically looking at 960 by 540 with 2x MSAA on the PS4 version. Now the technique is also in effect on the PC version, meaning that we can try it out with our console target setups. What you're seeing here is our PS4 target running at 1080p and offering performance pretty much on par with the actual PS4 game, a 67 FPS average. Then we have our Neo target using the MSAA temporal upscale technique at 1800p. 55.5 frames per second, not bad. We've lost around 18% of performance, but we've almost tripled resolution. And at the bottom there, you can see frame rates with Rainbow Six not using the MSAA upscale. It's pretty grim. Using the new technique actually increases frame rate there by 55%. But the bottom line is that it is still upscaling, so is it actually noticeable? Well, I plugged in a GTX 1080 and reran this sequence, capturing at 4K with the upscaling solution on and off. Now, bear in mind here that the upscaled footage is actually 1080p with 2x MSAA in terms of rendering load. Compare it with the native 4K footage there. I mean, there are upscaling artifacts, but wow, I mean, that's pretty good stuff. Right then, so let's be clear about what our testing has revealed here. Neo has been called PlayStation 4K and it is designed primarily to interface with 4K screens, but it is based on a mainstream PC part designed for 1080p and 1440p gaming. Developers can address the GPU more directly in a console and get more out of it, but there are hard limits here in terms of pixel fill rate, memory bandwidth, and this will severely limit Neo's capabilities as a native 4K console. But we should be able to double pixel throughput and upscale nicely to 4K using some next-gen techniques. But there's another option here. What if we push Neo to produce better looking 1080p instead? And for that, let's return to our first test subject, Star Wars Battlefront. We're back on Endor here, comparing PS4 quality settings at 900p on our target PS4 hardware with PC's 1080p Ultra preset running on our Neo target. Now this is a 44% boost to resolution and a vastly increased compute requirement. And amazingly, the old PS4 is still actually around 5% faster. I mean, that's how insane Ultra settings are these days, but a shadow quality tweak would address the differential easily enough. So the question is, what do you want from PlayStation Neo? Should that extra GPU power be used to service a higher resolution optimized for a 4K screen, or do you just want much more from 1080p? Now, based on the documents I've read, Sony has opened that option up to developers if that's what they want to do. In fact, the only resolution requirement with Neo is that all titles must render at a 1080p minimum, and they must run at the same frame rate or better as the standard PS4 game. 
Okay then, well that's kind of where we're at right now. Please feel free to like and subscribe if you'd like to see more deep dive analysis and to support our work. But for now, thanks for watching.